Welcome back everyone to our Beginner's Guide to Factorio version 15, episode number 5 or 6. I actually don't even remember. I think this is episode 5. I can very easily check in a second I will. Um, I just want to kind of give you an idea of the amount of time I try to invest in between episodes. So first of all, yes, you will start to notice a lot of new stuff going on, but here's the red science, there's our steel smelting, here's our smelting centers, so nothing too crazy has changed. Just that we have this military science stuff, which I'm going to definitely go into a lot of detail about later. But let's start off just by placing down a radar, um, which is going to help us a lot in order to get better vision of our factory when we don't actually, uh, when we aren't actually nearby something. So I think I already showed this mechanic if I use the mouse, I mean map, and I zoom in, we have this mechanic, right? But the good news is, I mean, the great thing about the radar is you can see I am here. There I am, right there. If I scroll up a little bit, you can see my vision ends there, and there I am again. If I scroll down, you can see I, I actually can see a little bit more, and this will be more apparent the further north I go. The mechanic I'm trying to explain here is just the fact that radars provide vision the same way my character does. So my character you can see is painting this little grid around himself, but if we keep going down we can obviously see a lot more. So this is our limit. We, it's, just, it's just one screen and if I go down here there I am and I can see a lot further. That's because this radar is going to provide vision on the map, which is really nice. Sometimes especially like in, if you're trying to look at something uh, what's gone wrong or what you did on another side of the map instead of just running over there It's really nice to use the map and zoom in but in order to do that You have to have these radars up. So let's just drop one more radar. I think One right here. will just will do the trick nicely for us Oops, I think that should be the perfect distance apart to give us pretty good coverage of our factory uh, Okay, so that's that that said let's look at all these all these Smelting centers should probably have changed if you remember what we did last time. They used to all be stone furnaces, now we've replaced every single one with steel furnaces. And steel is now completely up and running. I mean, it's not a big surprise. We, all, we already knew that iron would go here, steel would go here. I just have um, a couple things to mention about this setup because it's really not done well. This is basically borderline spaghetti. <laughs> Uh, I just took this bottom line instead of feeding it in and merging it here f to go to the first iron smelting center. That line is now turning in on itself, and if you're wondering why I'm doing this weird thing, it's just because I wanted this electric mining drill to be prioritized. Otherwise, the thing furthest back, so the top line here, will be prioritized for this. But that's not going to matter it, very, very, very quickly here, as soon as we just connect this one line for steel down here which I was just waiting to do on camera. Um, now there's going to be so much demand for that iron that uh, we need all the electric mining drills we can get on that line. Now I am peeling a little bit of steel back because that is going to feed over to the military science, but let me talk about the military science only once I've gone through all the other changes. Probably a big one you can notice is that my tool belt has expanded now. One of the three technologies I have researched off camera, one is to expand my tool belt. You'll also see I now have red transport belt, the next fastest one. And this is the another thing I researched, logistics too. And the fact that I have grenades should point out the third technology I have researched off camera, which so that's logistics two, tool belt, and military two. Those are the only three you've missed. So if you would like to, you should take a moment now to catch up. And speaking of a moment to catch up, uh, I know that these episodes take a while to come out, and I see every time, oh, it would be more helpful if they came out faster. Well, it's kind of difficult for me to do that because I do, this is already take number seven or eight for this particular video, and I also wanted to show you how much time I invest in between, shoot, like, shoots, in between the different episodes. So this is the one we're on right now, end of episode five, B is for beginning. Um, the last one we ended, which was I don't remember, I think it was only take four or five, but it was only the second complete one I finished. Usually I cut off in the middle if I babble. This was at play time of six hours and five minutes, and you can see that I have gone a full, almost a full five hours since my last playthrough in this world doing things. And that obviously was not mostly 
doing research, it was a lot of planning out how to describe military science well. Um, I actually even did worked more, probably I'm up to like seven hours since the last video because I, I went to a different save and I was experimenting with a bunch of different ways you could do military science because I wanted to do it in a way which made sense but also could give us the benefit of a, a small amount of storage. So um, let's get over to military science soon, but let me finish first talking about all, all the other changes. Um, we'll put down the other line of copper in a moment. Mainly it's all the steel furnaces being added in. We've now dropped these two radar. Uh, I did merge the two coal lines, so there's no low, there's no more of a balancer on the middle column, and this one is now connected, whereas it was not before. We'll get to these in a second, because those will be necessary for doing military production. Um, now, up here, I've replaced our burner mining drills with electric mining drills. And I am doing this trick, which is, it's really not ideal to just feed your stone directly into smelting machines. I was doing this at first, though, just because most of what I needed for a while was to get more steel furnaces. I wanted to get them quickly in order to speed up the process of getting more stone, more steel. Getting all these resources faster, we needed to upgrade the furnaces. So now that we have, like, kind of a lot of stone brick. Uh, I think we can just take this away. And I have a chest here, which is storing currently. So I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna disconnect the power temporarily. Um, let's just pick these up. I don't have enough room. Okay, that's, that's that was not unexpected that that was gonna happen. So let's put the stone brick in here for now. I don't need it. Should give me enough room to pick these up. Nope, not quite. So drop off more of this. Oh, power, power's another concern for us. As we can see, even without really doing anything, even with the factory relatively at idle, um, our power supply is barely covering like 70% of the demand. So you can imagine if we were doing research right now and the moment even we were to do research, we'll see that power really goes way too high. And I. I let me briefly explain these two bars in case that they already weren't explained or you don't understand them. This is this top bar is if you are not producing enough power, how much power are you producing out of the 100% that you need? That would be this here. So this bar will only be empty if this one is full because this one shows how much am I producing based on how much I need. So if you need more than you're producing, this will be completely full, which means that you're produ not all of your power that you're producing is being used. And, uh, and then you'll see how much more power you need to produce to satisfy demand up here. So basically, if this is not pure green, 100% green, you're having big power issues. But even if this is most of the way full, you should consider upgrading your power because you're very close to um, having too little supply. So we'll do this in a moment as well. But let me just finish off doing this. Okay, we got this. I'm actually just gonna combine these like so. And we'll just probably put down, um, we can do it like this. This is kind of inefficient, but yeah, it's fine. This will work as well. This will work just as well. In fact, I can just do it like this. Feed that into, okay, I didn't think that would work, but I wanted to give it my best shot anyway. Huh. I really can't do this. Get in there, stone. This is stuff I don't want to do on camera. This is like a waste of time in my opinion. Let's just drop this power line back down and get these going. So we want one here. And then, yeah, interesting. It's funny that that happened to be right in the middle. <laughs> Just drop one there, I don't care. Then just get it all going. So this will produce a lot of stone for us. This will fill up pretty quickly. Um, and then if I needed more stone, I could just have this be fed onto this belt as well, or some other belt that gets smelted into stone. But I'll fix this off camera, we'll do something. <laughs> but this is where we should pay our attention next, which is the power station. Now, I've already constructed some boilers. There they are. So let's get this done quickly so we can move on to the new stuff. Space, no, no space, and then space, and then space. Okay, use our pipes. One, two, three, four. Now we need inserters. 
One, two, three, four on this side. And one, two, three, four on this side. Next, we need our actual steam engines. One, two, one, two. And I'm gonna put my power lines down this side before I move over just cause it'll save us a little bit of backtracking. Okay, there's that. And we might as well just complete the next part of the grid anyway, like so. And like so. Get the remainder of these steam engines out. Oop. Missed it by one. And last but not least, the last one. Okay, good. So now steam power should be producing a lot more and we can see that there. So we're producing essentially like you can think of this full bar as our total production. And this is how much demand we have. So we're producing about four times more than we need, which is a nice com comfort zone. Okay, moving right on down south to here. Now this is the current setup I had, which is just going to be woefully inadequate. What we need to do is merge this with this line, and then after that, send some of the coal off to the other side, because this is just not gonna be enough. In fact, what I think I'm gonna do, instead of this merger here, is I'm gonna just contort us this way. Probably do it here. And we will go like this, merge, and I'll just redo this quickly. So we'll balance right there where I have those two lines coming in, which I'm sure you could guess is what I was gonna do. Okay, there it is. Do I even wanna split this? I guess I will split it. So part of it will go this way, part of it will go that way. I left this on power just so we can actually see this progression of coal running down. In fact, we can chase the line so here we go, that should be a little bit better. I'm not sure if it'll be absolutely enough coal because grenades do take a lot of coal. And that is gonna work us all the way down. Whoops, one more thing before we get to military science. I, w I love doing this, just clicking and holding while I'm running and filling in all the gaps with either assembling machines or steel furnaces in this case. Um, we had this all set up, I just wanted to actually put down the steel furnaces. So the next thing we might do is start getting, I don't know, I might even fix this. I might just like out of my paranoia or not my paranoia, my rigid demand for good layouts. I might shift this entire section down by two. If you haven't really built this up yet, I'd consider do moving everything down by two so that the nice setup, let me actually use the map for this now that we have our radars up. So the nice little entrance the nice little balanced um, splitters on the top that feed this the two sides, the two input sides nicely. You can see we didn't do here because I didn't have enough room to work. So if this was even down by another two, we'd probably have enough room to bring in coal, to bring in iron, to loop it around the other side and to split this nicely. And this is the reason why we're not even gonna be using these bottom um, smelters the bottom furnaces won't even ever receive a supply of iron because we just don't have enough input. Like we're splitting from a line which is barely full as it is. And when, I mean, we're dividing a line which is barely full into two lines which are less than half full. So this won't even make it halfway down, but it's just a stopgap measure. Now, I've already gone on 15 minutes explaining the various things. And really, honestly, we should be doing research always while we have, um, let's do this electric energy distribution, I really like this one. So now that we have this nice setup for red and green science, we should just be doing all of our red and green science. And that leads us to, at last, military science production. And you might be wondering, what in God's name is this monstrosity in the middle here? And I, I wouldn't fault you for saying that. Normally, I like to make my military science close to the main bus, but because I know that I wanted it close to the labs and stuff, I just stuck it here. It was either here or right out. I would have had to wait until below green circuits. And although green circuits technically ends here, so if I zoom out, we only see this. And you can think, oh, I'll just build it right here and move it right below the um, copper, um, the ore patch we have. 
Well, that's not true because we have the template here, and that's just for line two. And I, I like to have four lines of green circuit. I like to have an entire four width of main bus as green circuit. So we wouldn't be able to get to military science until down, maybe like over here. So instead of doing that, and but these research technologies are just going to become kind of flying in basically faster than I can even talk about them. Um, so in order to, to put military science in a reasonable place, I'm going to put it here. And that kind of makes sense because with oil right over here, we can build blue science maybe over here. So there, there might be some rhyme and reason to this. For now, let's start talking about what the military science um, actually requires. Okay, so now let's talk about military science. First, let's talk about the ratio of assembly machines that we're going to need just to produce the appropriate number of military science packs. We'll do this by comparing the ratio of science packs that we already have. Okay, and I'm just going to let that research tick out for now. We It'll just keep interrupting us. So red science packs each take five seconds to produce and green science packs take six seconds to produce. And this is why we have this ratio of six assembly machines to produce green science packs for every five we have producing red science packs because this allows us to produce uh, the same amount of either science pack at the same rate of time. So that took us, we, I mean, that's why we have six in a row here and we have four of these and we have five, 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 five. So it's 20 and 24, which this is just five to six times four. How are we gonna do with military? How, what are we gonna do with the military science packs? Well, it takes 10 seconds, but note at the very top, two times military science packs, which means that this is the same ratio as our red science pack creation. So we just basically want as many assembly machines for military science as we already made for red science. Now, unfortunately, that's actually quite a lot of mainly grenades and actually a lot of gun turrets as well. So what I've actually done here is only made enough for half that ratio. We're, we're planning here to satisfy only um, 10 total labs, which we can put, I guess, here, something like this. So this is what we expect will be our military science producing labs. And I may expand this off camera, it's a possibility, but um, one way you can kind of cheat this system is that not everything needs military science. And a good thing to do if your military science production isn't quite as um, up to snuff as your red and green, or even your red, green, and blue, is you can just alternate between a science which needs military um, science packs and then a research item which does not. And during the time when you're not researching the military science, your production will build up a huge buffer. So you'll have a huge buffer of these beakers built up. And when it comes time to research the next technology, even though you aren't producing as fast as the other ones, the buffer you have with uh, the military ones should make up for the fact that you don't have as high of a production rate. And by the time you run out of science packs, hopefully you've already finished um, the researching that technology. So that, that's my little trick is just to bounce between military and non-military. And that way, even though you're, even if you only have 10 um, assembly machines like I do here instead of 20, which would fit the ratio, um, it should be okay. So what we have here is a, obviously a monstrosity of a, like it's its own main bus splitting off here. There is a method to this madness though, so let's just take a look at what's going on. As I just, I don't like this, it's not pretty, it's very spaghetti-ish, but um, I sniped immediately uh, a line for steel, and this is gonna be only for our um, piercing ammo. Then I have a line of iron, a line of copper, and another line of iron. It's kind of a weird ratio, a weird like setup, but there's, again, some kind of method to this madness. Basically, immediately the copper Sorry, yes, copper is gonna be split because we want copper later, but the steel is going to go into just um, just the bullets. In order to get these piercing, the piercing ammo, we need steel, we need copper, and then we only need um, the normal firearm magazines, the yellow bullets, but because those need iron, we obviously have to have a supply of iron, even though these don't. So this just requires one yellow bullets 
one steel, and then five copper plates. Quite a lot of copper, but um, not a whole lot of steel, which is fine because we may not have that much. This is already split off from one line, so if there's ever a shortage of steel, this should still be quite a lot for us for a while. Copper, we'll have to monitor that. And in fact, one of the things I was even getting Logistics 2 for in order to get the red transport belt and all that is I was fearing we might need red transport belt for the copper lines and even for the iron lines because this is kind of a demanding... Military science is pretty demanding on resources, at least early resources. Copper, iron, these aren't usually ones you have to worry about too much because they're they're so... Like, we already have pretty extensive and can expand very easily to even more extensive iron and copper smelting um, centers. Okay, what's the actual ratio? That's the next question. So for, uh, in order to produce a, a pair of military science packs, we're gonna want one piercing round, one grenade, and one gun turret. Well, that's really easy. So you're saying that if I want to produce 10 total, now note this is, uh, these produce two per. So although I only have 10 here, again, remember, that that's producing 20 packs. Unfortunately, it's also just taking 10 seconds to do so. But still, so this, we have 10 labs down, so I might as well just multiply this by 10. So every 10 seconds, I'm going to need 10 piercing rounds, 10 grenades, and 10 gun turrets. It's nice to put it this way because this shows you that the ratio I'm going to want for my finished product. So I want a total production which satisfies one piercing round per second, one grenade per second, and one gun turret per second. So with the 10 assembly machines that I have, that's the production I need to satisfy those. Let's take a look at these piercing rounds. They are produced every three seconds. So in order for me to have one per second, I need three of them, which is what we have. We actually have four of them because these um, yellow, the yellow bolts, the firearms, I guess I can call these, I'd rather call these normal rounds than these piercing rounds. So the normal rounds, um, they can actually feed two piercings. And I think they, the ratio, what is it? These produce every one second, and these need one every three seconds. So one of these can actually supply for three piercing. Um, so technically we only need one of these, and we could have made like a triangle setup, and that would have been enough for our, that would have been all we need for the science. But it's kind of nicer to put it in a line like this, and I have another reason. Since piercing rounds are something we'll be using a lot of until we get uranium rounds, and that's a pretty far, that's a, that's a ways off. That's pretty far off. This last one, I technically can still draw from it if I want. And I am capping this at only 600 piercing rounds. But it's going to produce into a chest for us. Now the next thing we're going to look at is grenades. So we need, again, one of these per second. And how long did they take to make? Eight seconds. Well, that's pretty simple. We just need eight centers then to produce one per second. So you can see the, the pattern here. This takes three seconds, so we need three of those to get three per second. This one takes eight seconds, so we need eight of those to produce eight a second. But if you've done the math here, I have nine centers. Again, the same thing. I want one of these to produce grenades for me, so I'm just stealing from the very end of the line. Now note the direction here is to the left. I'm bringing in coal right to left, and I'm outputting left to right. Technically, this last one doesn't output right now, but I could, if I wanted, also allow this one to output by extending it like this. And then if I cap this, which I hadn't, but I should, <laughs> Those are nice, grenades are really nice for blowing apart forests, so it's not bad to have a, a pretty large supply. So as it is right now, this one, I'm gonna take that one away again though. Um, this one will only take if there was enough coal for the initial eight, and those initial eight are the ones I want to actually supply science. Now, I didn't actually connect all this up yet, so we can see that grenades is done. We have our eight plus one. And we have our um, piercing, which is three. Oh, whoop, whoop, we've had an attack. Being attacked. He just damaged his object, which is okay. So we'll just repair it, no harm, no foul. 
but that does show us that we need to be careful about our pollution. Now, since I'm not researching anything right now, our pollution should be cutting back a little bit, but we can see our pollution is going, uh, starting to overrun one of the alien colonies. I didn't talk about this. I'm not sure how much I've talked about um, real world in general, but enemies do not respawn in this. The normal mechanic in Factorio is that enemies slowly expand, which means that even if you aren't really doing anything, enemies will slowly start creeping closer to your base. Um, but in the real world, the aliens, the um, biters, do not respawn at all. I mean, they respawn from their spawning dens, but they don't build new spawning dens if you destroy the old ones. Whereas in the normal game of Factorio, they will do that. Now notice we actually can see this vision here. We have vision there for a moment. We still do, now it's gone, but our radars, the two that we put down, they will slowly begin scanning the perimeter and expanding our knowledge, which is nice. Cause you can see, I actually did a lot of work off camera and that's what I was gonna point to. I did a lot of exploration just to see what was around us. And these two blue dots we see next to each other, those are my victory poles. Those are two small electric poles put right next to each other. That's a legacy from a different time when um, biters did expand and when you put player placed items down, they wouldn't, you can see that there's like a block like structure to the map. And I can even show that even better if I just zoom out and hit shift plus space. Each one of these is, cons is called a block. We have our individual tiles, but this is a block. And all the spawning mechanics for biters and a lot of the different mechanics actually are all resolved by looking at individual blocks. So on the big map, if you were to originally put down like power lines like we've done here, then biters would be restricted from putting a new base up, expanding anywhere within like three, four, I don't know what the number was, blocks of your user, your player created like object. So if a tile, a block, contained a player object, um, biters weren't supposed to spawn next to that. Now that's all been changed, but we don't really care in this one because biters don't expand their bases anyway. So it looks like I'll probably have to get my military up now that we have piercing ammo, and maybe go and take a few of these bases out. Because I took out three down here, and probably another one which I didn't mark somewhere. There's a few other smaller bases which I probably didn't... Oh. I left some power lines over there, so I guess I killed something there. But yeah, uh, that's the expression we've done, but now in the three or four hours that'll probably happen between the end of this video and the next the start of the next video, I'm just assuming if it takes me another you know, three or four hours that the radar will probably show us a lot more of the map by then. Okay, but that's not talking about military science. We got distracted. I kind of already had everything hooked up here, and now we're gonna see the real reason why I wanted this ratio, this like weird configuration of steel on the bottom, iron, copper, and steel. I mean iron. Steel was only needed for this, so it was natural to put it on the outside because it doesn't need to continue onward. It basically peels off immediately and then it's done. Both of these irons need to be split once because they are needed with something else. Now they're actually not needed very much, despite this needing um, four iron plates every second. Um, it's just two items which are using four per second. That's only eight per second. Considering we have eight of these up here, even though they're only using five every eight seconds, that's less than, that's about one every two seconds. But considering we have eight of them, well, we're back up to four per second. But that's not anything compared to what our <laughs> gun turrets are gonna need, which is a lot, a lot of iron. So we're gonna want iron on the outside, Iron on the outside down here as well. It's a symmetric setup. And what we have is gear rotating between gear wheel space for the, we do the one, two, 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 one configuration still, which is nice. But we're gonna alternate between gear wheel and then gun turret. So gear, gun, gear, gun, gear, gun, gear, gun. The first gear is gonna be fed, the gears from this are gonna be fed into the um, gun turrets need for gear wheels. So that all happens with the iron on the top. These actually need more iron. And if you're wondering if we can get through uh, four per second here, <laughs> that's four per second. One of these gear wheels is about what we needed for like either the ammo setup or the grenade setup. Just one of these and we have four. And that doesn't even count the, the gun turrets. 
So this is really where we're gonna need red transport belt. I believe we're gonna have to make these lines, the entire lines of iron, red transport belt to get iron down this line much, much faster. And we'll just see how like bad um, this line does, this yellow line does in terms of iron. I've done some calculations. Again, this is why I spent like three hours um, doing some research off camera. I think all but the last pair will be producing gun turrets at a complete ratio. It might be this one slows down a little bit as well because we're splitting off to grenades and to ammo. But I know this one will only produce at about half ratio even if these lines were just pure yellow um, and completely full all the time. So let's go ahead and connect this up. Get those going, get this going, and more importantly, to connect it here. You can see I left myself, you can know you just hit Z to drop. I like to leave little reminders for myself about what's going on. Oh yeah, this is gonna go, so grenades will join piercing. This is gonna go down and around, and this will feed into our final production center here. So this is the, the setup I do for this is both of the inputs we're gonna need are gonna go on in the middle, and then the science will be produced and dropped on the outside here, which will go down and merge with this one in some manner, which I'm not sure yet. And then those will feed onto this one right here, giving us military science down the line. So it's all nice and good, but it's all well and good, I said, <laughs> I say, but okay, this is what I was expecting, that these last two would not get anything. That's what I, I saw from my original planning and a little bit of gameplay experience trying to see what would happen. Uh, okay, so I think that that's it. Basically, with since we needed eight of these, again, the ratio, if we want one per second and they take eight seconds to build, well, we need eight of them. So I have the copper feeding from the middle. Only the gun turrets need copper. The gear wheels only need iron, obviously. So we, st we take co copper from the middle we take our iron from the outside, we get our gear, gear wheels passed to us directly so that they are not on their own bus, I mean their own line, transport belt line. And that is gonna produce for us gun turrets. And yeah, um, you, the best way to see how things are being produced is I think here, you can see in the bottom right panel, products finished is five here, it's five here, it's four here, and it's still zero there. If we were able to speed this up with Red Belt, which I don't have enough of to do the entire line, I'm sure we'd be producing um, a little bit out of this one, and maybe even all of it out of this one. All right, so last thing is we just need a setup to take. Uh, let's just take from the middle, take from the outside. Now we're gonna pull. Let's, yeah, let's do it this way. Color coded. And let's pull from the middle as we already kind of set up as our standard. This needs some power lines. Good. We just need to connect this, which shouldn't be too difficult. It's connected. And we're now producing military science. It's not going anywhere quite yet, but we'll solve that in a second. So I hope all that math wasn't too confusing. It's part of the reason why I've had to re-record this episode so many times, because I think the math is just pretty confusing for military science. So let's see. We can probably just feed this directly onto the line and then have something else have to come back. Mm, well, let's do it this way. Now military science can feed onto one side and the other one can feed onto the other. Um, how do I wanna do this? Down? Let's actually go over. I like that better. And voila, military science. Not, it's not gonna get picked up yet. Why is that? Because we haven't set something which requires military science, which would cause our 
research to want to pick up military science packs, but now they are. So we've done it, and at the same time, I'm now getting a bunch of objects damaged and destroyed, and dear god, we have to respond to this incident. This video has gone on for way long enough, as it is. Uh, good thing they're only destroying transport belt, that's the, the easy thing for me to fix. You guys probably noticed that a long time ago, and we're just laughing as I continue babbling along. But we'll, we'll make do with this. This is fine. Since they, the funny thing about biters is they get pushed along the transport belt. So th it's hard for them to actually destroy a transport belt because, <laughs> oh, they did, they did. Did they destroy it? I can't tell. It has 10 health left, 10 out of 150. Awesome. Okay, so that's going to conclude this episode. What are we going to do off camera? Well, a lot of research. I'm going to do landfill, I'm going to do cir circuit network, I'm going to do gates, I'm going to do engine, oil processing. Okay, all the shooting speed ones or the laboratory efficiency ones, you can assume that I'll do those instantly because they have no bearing on the actual technology. They're just efficiency improvements. So I won't even talk about doing those, you, ju you just should do those as soon as they're available to you. And we'll end up doing solar energy and concrete as well, so I'm going to have all the just red and green science done by the time we come back. And again, the gun turret ones I'll probably do off camera, the bullet shooting speed. Since these things don't require anything, I mean, don't um, really enhance game, gameplay in any way other than make you more efficient at doing something, I'll, do, I'll be doing all those off camera just uh, naturally. And you can just assume that I'll be doing those off camera um, whenever, whenever those come up. So let me cut this video off before we get beyond 40 minutes. I might have to make this line red too. And what else? Yeah, I might do some red belt switching around. Um, I might get some more coal down here somehow. I'm gonna need a, a few adjustments. And then I'm probably gonna go off and kill a few of these biter bases which are getting a little too big for their britches. So that's gonna conclude this episode. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for your patience on the episodes coming out if you're watching these live or you know as they're released. But I, I just try to do as many takes as it takes to get uh, to get the right cut. And that does take some time, sometimes. Okay, <laughs> enough repeating of words. Call this video to a close. So thanks for watching, and until the next episode, take care.